Imagine rewiring your brain with the help of a ball. This is Robert Manny, host of Guys Guys TV, and this week my very special guest is my friend, author, and creator of the Cogno movement, Bill McKenna. It all starts right now on Guys Guys TV. You can also catch me on Guys Guys Radio, my worldwide podcast, and every Wednesday on KCAA Radio here in Southern California. Guys Guys TV, Guys Guys Radio, thanks for your support. Okay, Guys Guys Radio, my favorite portion of the show when I bring in a very special guest and I've got I've got what it truly is someone who is a very special guest because I have worked with this gentleman and he's really helped me. And in fact, right before our, you know, coming on air, we did a little more work and he's helped me once again. His name is Bill McKenna. Let me tell you a little bit about him. I, my wife, Uni, uh, watches Gaia TV and she, uh, often she said, she's told me, you have to have this person on the show. And invariably she's been right. And a couple of weeks ago, she said, Bill McKenna, look him up. You got to watch this. And I watched him interviewed on Guy, and I was like blown away because not only was he was a he was a, he's a regular guys guy, but he's a teacher, and he makes he's very generous of heart, and he makes things simple. He shows you how to do things right there, right on the air. There's no like sign up here and pay X amount of money. He's very generous. Of course, he's you know he has his own uh, uh, profession and at his own practice, if you will but he's just a generous of heart person. He's helping and I want to support his work in any way I can. And I couldn't wait to get him on Guys Guys Radio. So he's here. Let me tell you a bit about him. He's a marathon runner, martial artist, helicopter pilot. So he's definitely a cool guy and a guy's guy, former adrenaline junkie. That's a self-description turned spiritual teacher. Bill McKenna has pioneered a groundbreaking method for creating massive change, shifting perspective, raising consciousness and I'm one who has benefited from Bill's practice and teaching. And it all centers around a brightly colored ball. It's like a soccer ball that has different shapes and sizes of different sizes and different colors on it. So we're gonna let Bill talk about that during our discussion. He, he's also the author of a fantastic uh, memoir called The Only Lesson, uh, which is really uh, has a lot of information about how you can help yourself there. And it's helped me tremendously. He's also created the Cogno movement system that has to do with that ball I was telling you about. And during his own life-changing spiritual awakening, Bill studied with a number of master teachers to learn the secrets of self-discovery and the ability to create miraculous change in his life and in the lives of others. He now shares all those secrets with the students in his renowned Secrets of the Masters series. While seeking to share what he's learned, Bill wants to help people in a faster, more long-lasting and profound way. And that's when he began working with the Cogno movement and discovered that change could be fast, easy, and even permanent. And then he developed the groundbreaking technology Cogno movement systems with his business partner, Liz Larson. And today, Bill is creating miracles for his clients along with Cogno movement practitioners around the world. He has truly helped me. I am endorsing him on the air right now. Please welcome to Guys Guys Radio, Bill McKenna. Oh, thank you. Thank you for that kind introduction, Robert. Well, that's the best introduction I can give because I really went through it. I, I walk the walk, so thank you. So let's start right at the beginning, Bill. Uh, for people who aren't that familiar with you and your personal story, you were a, a hard-swinging, uh, very successful businessman. Uh, you had a lot of big guy toys, uh, yachts, and uh, et cetera. You flew helicopters, you were in the prime of your life, and then everything changed for you and you've been on the spiritual path and teaching people and being very generous and, and really a gift to humanity. What happened to create this change, Bill? Um, gosh, you know, uh, first of all, it's certainly not a journey that I ever intended to go on. That's, uh, you know, as, uh, as you mentioned, I, I, had a, I had a yacht and, uh, and uh, two helicopters and and a lot of other, you know, fun toys. And uh, I was in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. I was bringing my yacht back, uh, was going to, because uh, of the hurricane season, uh, and moving it up to Catalina Island for the summer. And uh, in the middle of the night, I, uh, I hit a uncharted rock, just uh, south of Ensenada and uh, split a hole right in the side, Titanic type hole right around the waterline. And, and uh, anyway, 
uh, it made it into uh, the port of Ensenada and got a patch on it and uh, ended up in, in uh, San Diego to get the work done for almost a year, which was, uh, which was kind of tough. Uh, tough to be taken out of the game, if you will, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was put on the sidelines. But uh, when that happened, I, uh, uh, I ended up uh, kind of going through a, an awakening that I didn't intend to. I had, a, uh, I had an on and off again girlfriend who lived in San Diego, and I, and I was like, God, you know, I'm not doing anything here. And I and uh, I really loved her. I wanted to marry her, but I, but I couldn't get along with her very good. Um, you know, I was very much on the logical end of things, mm -hmm. and and she was not. Uh, couldn't understand her very well. So anyway, got together with her, and I was like, I'm going to give this a, my best effort. Best effort this time. I'm not going to, you know, uh, I'm either going to never see her again, or I'm going to marry her. One of the two, and and so. I, uh, in an effort uh, to understand her better, uh, I, I kind of noticed that she was very intuitive. Like uh, literally, you know, I could uh, think of something and, and then she would, you know, tell me what I was thinking. Like, you know, I, I remember uh, saying, you know, one time, tell me what I'm, I'm thinking, you know, and she would say, ah, it's a uh, orange, no, no, uh, it's a, it's a lemon, lime, lime or lemon or something, and, and, and I was going, lemon, Jesus, you know, I, I don't like lemons, don't use lemons on anything, and, and, and uh, she guessed it, hey, if you said Ferrari, yacht, new helicopter, this, that, the other thing, I would have been like, you know, what, what was the oh, significance of that? So what was the significance? Of well, the, the, the significance is, is that, that she had a gift of being like really intuitive, think something I never believed in, right? But, but in between, like day after day, month after month, she would like say things and it was remarkable. Uh, there was a time when, you know, the, the yacht had been repaired and, and I, I had a short there was a short somewhere that was causing the batteries to drain and the alarms were going off in the middle of the night. Uh, and I was aboard and I'm and and to, to put things in perspective, you know, the wires are maybe uh, smaller than your pinky, but if you, but if you, if you, if you added up all the wires, they would probably be as thick as two telephone poles, you know, just, a massive amount of wires, you know, three decks, mm -hmm. two, you know, uh, just uh, uh, anyway, a lot of stuff, right? Uh, well, how do you find the short, which I'm not an electrician? Well, she, uh, you know, I'm searching for three days for this thing. And, uh, and she just, she just like rubs her hands and, and she puts it over the electrical panel and the, and the, and she says, it's in the galley. Uh, it's over in the refrigerator. And now the freezer. And, and uh, I, I clicked the, the panel uh, on, the, on the freezer to turn it off. And the, and the, 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 the you know, I could see the boom, you know, the, the, mm. yeah, the whole thing, you know, I could see the, the uh, little dials come way down, you know. So it, it was frosted over is what was the problem. And when it frosts over, it takes more power. But that, that intuition, the significance of it all is that um, I went out and bought a bunch of books on intuition. And I was like, well, if I understand this better, maybe I will uh, understand her better. And I read all these books, 15 books. And you know, after eight or nine books, I started recognizing there was a couple themes in the books and they were like me hey. okay what were the themes oh the themes were like everybody's got this it, you know except if you can't access it it's because you have certain things you think it's bad because of religion which i didn't think it was bad mm -hmm. it was just was i didn't think she was bad uh if you are resentful if you're resentful then uh that blocks it right? Because the intuition comes in at a very um, light, 
right? Uh, in, in joy and love and peace and stuff like that, you know, you can access this, this type of information. And in resentment is very heavy, right? When we have resentment, it feels thick, right? My body feels heavy with it, right? I don't feel very good. So I, uh, you have to learn how to, uh, you have to learn how to allow then. Yeah, well, actually, it's a little bit more than allowing. Uh, I, what, what happened for me was they, the books were saying, you got to forgive. And uh, if, you're, if, uh, if you have this and you want your intuition, you got to forgive. And for me, I, I was the captain of resentment. You know, I could hold a grudge. I'm Irish Catholic. You know, we'll, we'll hold a grudge, you know, for decades is nothing. You know, I can hold it. How is the, uh, for, our, for our audience, the connection between, because it's interesting, between forgiveness and intuition, you normally wouldn't put them like together necessarily. Yeah. I wouldn't. How, how did you have that eureka? Like, wow, the forgiveness impacts your intuition. I, it was only because the book said it. Like there was book after book after book was talking about this. And I did so, they talk about it? To, uh, I don't mean to interrupt you, but yeah. did they say like, okay, forgiveness is important. And then, you know, intuition, here's intuition. Or did they say a key to the door to open your intuition is forgiveness? The key to open the door to intuition is forgiveness. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the beginning door. Mm -hmm. And my door was, you know, dead bolted shut. You know, I had, you know, I had uh, oh, how, how did you open it up then? How did you open the deadbolt? What did you do? Okay. <clears throat> what I did is, is I, I asked myself the question, right? On, um, on one hand, is anybody going to give me uh, a dollar, a hundred dollars, a hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars for what happened to me? You know, the, <clears throat> the beatings and what have you that I got in my life, is anybody going to somehow compensate me? And the answer came back, no, they don't give it, they don't give a hoot. <laughs> Not even a little bit do they care. So um, on the flip side, I was saying, well, if um, I'm not going to get anything for my resentments, then, <clears throat> excuse me, then um, what about the opposite side? If I do forgive, I'm going to possibly, possibly get the same type of intuition that my girlfriend had. And I, I was like, oh man, I'm going to kill it. I, if, if I, if I had her intuition, I would be killing it in the market. We'd be looking at a new mega yacht with a helipad, you know? And so I'm so selfishly, selfishly, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to forgive all those people for everything. Let, let me ask you this, Bill. So then could <clears throat> we make, could we make the conjecture that, that by forgiving, you're actually helping uh, your intuition because you're raising your frequency. And by raising your frequency, your tuition is going to open up more. There you go. Okay. Exactly. Okay. I just want to make it, you know, put it into a nutshell for everybody out there. So you went on this path, you were a successful hard swinging business guy and you liked your toys and you had this kind of epiphany. Uh, how did, and I, I believe, your wife is this young lady that you talked yeah, about. She, right? Yeah, got married. So how did the two things happen where one, how, how did you proceed in your life journey with the studying and all of that? How did you win the heart of your, your wife, who I met, very lovely and lovely uh, child? Um, how did you make it all work? And how long did it take? Um, well, it didn't take long. I mean, you know, uh, she wanted to get married to me anyway. So, you know, that was, it was just like a bonus for her that okay. I, I got over a lot of my, my stuff, right? Because when we resent uh, other people, what we do is we take it out on the people closest to us, right? It's the, the, the person that you resent, you're just trying to get away from them, right? But the, the people that feel the pain 
are the ones that are right next to you. And you don't even realize you're doing it, right? You know, your, your, your negative attitude or your, you know, um, spiciness, shall we say. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it wasn't long afterwards that, you know, we got engaged and we got married and, and we had a, had a beautiful daughter. Um, so a, a lot of what the work you did, Bill, and correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, you had to overcome your anger issues. And, and by doing that, that also raised your frequency. So uh, how did you manage? What was the key for you to learning how to manage and assuage your anger so it didn't get in the way? Because, you know, forgiveness and anger on diametrically opposed ends of the spectrum. And to get there it must have been some work for a guy who was a passionate person. And as you've stated, and listen, most guys, we're all, I'm, I'm that way also. Most guys have some anger stuff. We, we, we you know, we get hot and uh, it's a tough one. And uh, how did you, how did you get from point A to point B there? How did you flip the switch? Oh, well, you know, we will do things. The things, one of the things that I learned is that we will do what we think is in our best interest. When you're angry, um, you see antagonists everywhere and you believe that it's in your best interest to maintain your anger. You're like, hey, you know what? I got to back you the heck up, you know, back up. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use my anger to back you up or make you perform in a certain way right? Because you, this person is misbehaving in some way, right? Mm -hmm. They're trying to get over on me or whatever, whatever the case may be. So for me, it was a leap of faith. I saw something better is that if I forgive, then I will have this in this intuition. And, and as a, um, a consequence of the forgiving, my anger went away. I didn't try to make my anger go away. I simply forgave. Okay. And how, how did you learn to forgive yourself, Bill? And how much a part of the process, how important uh, a part of the process was self-forgiveness and self-love? Because you taught me, uh, taught me a lot about that. And by the way, my special guest on Guys Guys Radio Bill McKenna, we're going to talk about his book, The Only Lesson and Cogno Movement, but let me throw that question back at you. Hey, that's, a, you know, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, for me, you know, the very first part was forgiving others. That was my focus, right? I was, I was focused on, you know, other people and what they had done. My, you know, I was, I was raised up in a, what I like to call a traditional Irish Catholic upbringing. You know, we have mental illness and alcoholism, you know, and uh, beatings and what have you that go along with that. So um, uh, my focus was external and uh, the uh, forgiveness for me came after I started forgiving other people. And I started to look at things just differently. And one of those viewpoints was that, you know what, with the place that I was at, with the level of understanding, with the level of fear that I have, I was doing the best I could in those moments. It certainly isn't what I'd ever do today. And, maybe, and many of the things, you know, 10 minutes after it happened, I'd be like, oh, man, God, you're an idiot. Why'd you do that? You know, and you judge yourself, right? I'd feel bad and, you know, carry it with me for decades, right? And, uh, um, but in that moment, in that moment when I was there, you know, maybe that was just the best I could do. And um, I've learned my lesson. I don't do those things no more. So you must have had gone through a lot. What was the step? Uh, so you, you did your studies. Where did you study and for how long? And then well, let me start there. So the studying. Because uh, it went uh, beyond your buying some books on intuition. You actually went off and then studied under masters, right? Right, right. I, I, um, I went to multiple uh, schools. 
uh, and I'd do it all simultaneously. Um, and there were some teachers that showed up uh, just amazingly. Um, the kind of teachers that, uh, you know, the things that happened back in the day, you know, 2000 years ago, they, you know, they talk about miracles and bilocation, you know, and mm -hmm. he was in like two places at of, one time. Yeah, you know. Masters of the Far East. Right? The Masters of the Far East. That's a great, great book. It was one of the first books I read. And, uh, and, and to me, that all sounded like absolute BS until I saw it, until I met the people and I saw it happen right there. And that now it became real for me because, you know, all this talk and this stuff in the books is like, oh, that's really conceptually. Yeah. That I, you know, I understand what you're saying, but in real life, you know, where I'm from, you know, that, that, that don't happen. Right. Exactly. Well, it, it, it does happen and uh, it, it is real. So um, when that became uh, bit by bit, that became real one, I went to the Berkeley Psychic Institute and an offshoot of that. And I went through their full program. I went to other schools that are like that. I, um, some of the teachers who I cannot, um, I cannot, they're still alive and I can't uh, name them because of their position. Sure. But they, uh, they would show me like they had a deck of cards, so to speak. And they would tell me and educate me and show me one card and my mind would be blown. And I'd be like, holy cow, I can't even, my reality just shifted. And then, you know, the next week, I would get one more card and that went on for over a decade. And I, um, and to this day, you know, I continue to learn and, and, uh, with some of those teachers and, and what do you mean? Uh, they'd show you a card. I don't, I don't quite follow that. Okay. Oh, so, so that, you know, my reality, right. Um, is, uh, for example, uh, back in the day, what you do is you would um, set a goal like, okay, I want a new Ferrari, right? And uh, my my Ferrari that I wanted was Magnum PI, right? You remember everybody back in the day, yep. mm -hmm. 308, you know, was the, you know, the, that Ferrari. And so, I, you know, you go out, you, you really focus on it, you, you know, and you go to work and, and that sort of thing. And I, I would, uh, you know, I work like hell, right? Uh, work harder than everybody else. And eventually, you know, you get your, you, you know, if you do that, you know, as I say, punch harder than the next guy, then you're going to get there, right? Uh, through effort. Well, this one teacher of mine uh, was there and, and uh, she was, she said, well, somebody wanted to say, you know, let's, how do you manifest? And I didn't know anything about that. I was like, well, I don't even know what that means. Right. And she was like, okay, I'm going to show you how. And she sat there in the front and she says, okay, we're all going to work on manifesting a new car. And, and she, and she led, I'm going to manifest, let's see, a Toyota Corolla and you know right what the, what the nothing, nothing like shooting for the stars right yeah no, yeah, yeah but this is where you know right we're all just you know our own perspectives right a Toyota Corolla so so for her it was and and she says you know by the way she was only just um pretending right so she imagined oh she felt the steering wheel and she said, oh, the seats, they got leather on them. And she, she would close her eyes and feel the steering wheel. And then she said, oh, it's got air conditioning. And she pressed the air conditioner. And she said, oh, my God, I can feel the cold air on me. And, and you know, where she lives is real hot. And so, so uh, you know, she's doing all this. Oh, it's an automatic. It's an automatic. <laughs> oh, I love this. You know, and all of this stuff. And uh, it had electric windows. And uh, so... She, she did this and literally, literally, maybe it was five minutes, maybe, maybe five minutes. 
And then, you know, the talk ended. And this is three o'clock in the afternoon. And she leaves. And uh, she's driving, by the way, an old station wagon. A, you know, and we're talking about a broke down station wagon. And so uh, she ends up uh, getting on the freeway and uh, the thing overheats as it usually does. And she pulls over to the side of the road. And, you know, the steam's coming out of the, uh, you know, out of the hood and, and this, uh, somebody pulls up behind her and, you know, knocks on the window, dot, 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 and she rolls down the window and, and the guy said, hey, can I help you? Oh, gosh, you know, no, I live down at da, la, 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 and I just need to, you know, get a few uh, exits down the thing. And this thing is going to cool off. You know, I just needed to pull over to the side of the road and let it cool off. And then I'm going to proceed on. But thank you so much. What's your name? Oh, John. Hey, John, I'm blah, blah. Oh, OK, cool. All right. Guy gets in his car, you know, and she, you know, thinks nothing of it goes, uh, gets on the road, and when it cools off and goes home. This is Saturday, Saturday at three o'clock. Monday morning, Monday morning, knock, 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 on the door, opens up, what the heck, who's here? Opens the door, hi, hi, I'm, uh, I'm John. Uh, you remember me? I uh, I met you the other day on the on the freeway. It's, oh, oh, how nice of you! Thank you for stopping. That was so nice of you. <laughs> and, and the guy, hey, 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 you know, listen, I, uh, me and my wife, we were, we uh, yesterday we went in to buy a um, a, a new Jaguar, <laughs> and you know we were we were there and we were going to trade in our Toyota Camry. Our Toyota Corolla, I think it was Toyota Corolla or camera scene, this uh, whatever it was, Toyota Car Camry or Corolla. But but uh, but it, it, the exact thing, right? He says, "Hey, you know the trading people weren't going to give me anything for this. I would you like this?" And it's oh my, look at that! Yes, that would be great. And exactly. what, was the, what was the key to her technique for our benefit of our listeners and viewers? Okay, so the key, the key was the level of understanding that she had come to thus far in her life. The understanding that she came to was one of compassion, of understanding, of, of forgiveness, of love, all of these higher frequency type feelings. She didn't have the resistance and the anger and the fear and the hatred and all that. She just was absent all of that. And as a side effect of that, when she thinks of something, then it happens. And when she puts her attention on it, it happens very, very quickly. So, Bill, is this, um, in your opinion, kind of a shifting towards a, a 5D type of living versus 3D, where you can, uh, you think of something and it can happen right away versus 3D, where it's very dense and things happen. You do this and you get that and you do this and you get that. Whereas it's all about effort. Whereas when you get into a higher frequency, it's not as much about effort, but it's about um, opening the channel and, and, in and intention. Yeah, yes, it is. So, so in the third dimension, uh, it is the home of conditional love. There is, is this uh, is a realm of laws, rules, regulations, yours and mine of separation. Uh, the predominant emotions that are happen within this three dimen third dimension are shame, guilt, grief, anger, fear, humiliation, blame, uh, addiction type desires and being demanding and condemning that type of pride type type thing is third dimensional and when you're in that like i was everything happens slowly and it happens through effort you have what we call linear time right there's 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour and this is the newtonian 
type of law, right? There's uh, everybody here that's listening to this is very familiar with that realm. The next one up is the actual 4D. And in 4D, you begin to let go. The third dimension is one of, a, of um, judgments and assumptions. And in the fourth dimension, you're letting go of your judgments and assumptions. You start to be grateful. Uh, this, you go from, from a conditional love to unconditional. It's a gradient, but you do it bit by bit and you become more and more unconditional. This, this uh, what happens is gratitude will begin to naturally emerge and then also a, a feeling of love for yourself, like a, like a feeling, like the, the feeling like you would have about somebody, a dog that you was your pet or, or maybe grandma, grandpa, somebody that you, that you non-romantically really love. And you start to feel that way and appreciate you. And that's how, that's how that kind of that shift takes place. And with this specifically time, it becomes malleable. Everything speeds up. Okay. Bill McKenna, my special guest on Guys Guys Radio. There's two big issues I want to get to and we're jamming on time here. So let's continue with the book. You wrote this book, The Only Lesson. It has chapters that uh, with a lot of concepts that you mentioned that mirror what we've been talking about. It's terrific and it leads you to the end, which is the only lesson. Uh, you can tell us what you want about the book. I'm not saying give away the end, ending, but we do want to help people also. So the name of the book is The Only Lesson. At the end of the book, you get to it. And it's a great read because it's autobiographical uh, biography, but it's autobiographic. But also there's lessons that Bill lived and learned each step of the way that we can all relate to. And then it gets us to the final lesson at the end of the book. Anything you want to say about the book? I'll leave it to you, Bill. Oh, well, you know, that book, you know, it, I wrote it. it. It was published in 2011. It's still out there uh, on Amazon and that sort of thing. You can get it, uh, you know, Kindle and that sort of thing. But it's, um, it, uh, I think it's probably the uh, perfect book for your radio show. Uh, um, it's, very, it's very good. I, I read it. I don't want to interrupt this. Forgive me on a plane and but and I thought oh I'm going to zoom through this because it's not that long however I found each chapter is power packed with things to get you thinking and feeling and helping shift your way of being from your head to your heart that that four and a half inches that's the longest distance we ever travel in life and I I realized that this is not the type of book you just power through the whole thing you read a chapter, maybe two, and then you sit there and you set it down and you let it process and you're really going to learn a lot. And then by the time you get that final lesson at the end, you're ready for it and it all comes together and it makes perfect sense. As simple as it may sound, there's a lot of dimension and depth to it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were hard fought uh, lessons that, that came out of it that ultimately end up with uh, you having a completely different life, uh, that one that your relationships go better, your ability to make things happen, uh, go bet it goes much better. And, um, uh, you, you have, uh, a different life experience, uh, that, um, well, uh, like, for example, the one where you were talking about in the hospital for you, mm -hmm. uh, that how people treated you after your last trip to New York. Yeah, I was telling Bill, uh, for our listeners that uh, based on Bill's techniques, and I don't want to make it like techniques, like it's some type of magic trick, but just by a, a, a way of being, if you will, I went to have an annual checkup in New York and uh, you know, it's very tense back there. It's different than Southern California. I, I'm a New Yorker. I understand when I go back there, the energy is different, but now there's a lot more dialed up anxiety because of all the issues going around. And I figured, well, I'm going to go to this uh, hospital to get some tests done. And it's usually the most depressing place you can be, but I'm going to send out so much love to everybody. And I was telling Bill before the show that by the time I was ready to leave after two hours of blood tests and ultrasound and all this other stuff, and 
fortunately, everything was fantastic. I just felt like I can be a living example of healing and send out all this positive love to everybody there. So these other people who are so worried and, you know, beaten down by the whole medical system and just in fear of like, uh, you know, he their health, um, no fault of their own. And uh, thank God they, we have these wonderful hospitals and everything. But I just want to send some love out there. And I got it back tenfold. And so Bill's technique really worked. So Let's do this, Bill. I want to make sure we have enough time to talk about it. You developed what's called the Cogno movement. It's a, I know it's a segue, but it's important because when we work together, um, you had like what's kind of a soccer ball and it has different colors and shapes on it. And we did some uh, uh, physical exercises of kind of going back and forth and what color is the ball, what color is the ball now and uh, walking and walking backwards and a whole bunch of type of stuff. What is Cogno movement? How would you describe it so the folks out there can get a grasp for it? What does it do and how does it work? Okay, so um, Cogno movement is a uh, modality that I developed that exploits natural neurological responses. So instead of suffering, right? Let's say that you have something that happened, a death, a divorce, uh, um, you know, you, you got uh, betrayed by your business partner and, he, and uh, you know, that sort of thing. It's probably, you know, the, one of the most common stories. Can relate to that. Right, yeah. So, so what I do, the work I do helps a person to release the trauma of it all and creates an emotional amnesia. So literally they don't feel it anymore. They remember what happened, right? But they, your, your body has let it go. Your, your mind will have uh, no thought of an issue if the body has in fact released it. And so what I do is stimulate your brain in multiple different ways. Uh, the three ways that you learn, kinesthetically, auditorily, and visually. And what I do is I force your eyes into different positions and I force your body into different positions. And within a little while, uh, it literally will go from the worst issue in your life to you feel absolutely nothing about it. And with that, comes all kinds of new epiphanies, ideas. We basically rewire your brain. Uh, we've proven that we prune and make connections. We prune the unuseful ones and we make other connections. You literally will get smarter during the process. Yeah, I, I can attest to it for all of our listeners. I went through the process with Bill. It took about a good hour and I was like, I don't know, what, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? But everything Bill just described happened with me. What was really interesting is I started talking about things I had no idea I had that were bothering me that were buried really deep down and Bill didn't try to pull them out of me. I offered them up and then we neutralized things. And uh, I'm in a way better place right now than before I worked with Bill. So thank you, Bill. Yeah, well, you're welcome. The, uh, the interesting thing that, and, and it's, a, it's a modality that is, that is evolving every single day. One of, the, one of the, the pieces that we discovered is that we can find a way into your subconscious uh, through your eyes that in particular positions of your eyes uh, they will, they do a certain thing that will tell us that, oh, there is an issue right here. Your eyes, your brain, and your spinal cord are one system. They all work together. So when there is an issue, right, uh, uh, the eyes will do a certain reaction. And then we can find the actual subconscious uh, thing that's stuck. It could be, you know, Hell, my, 
you know, my uh, Red Rider wagon got stolen when I was six years old and, you know, or something. And, and you're like, what the heck? What does that have to do? It's, it's, it's like a regression body? in a way. You're, you're, it's like, it's a, I'm an advanced master clinical hypnotist certifi certification. I have that. And that's very similar to, uh, it's a completely different path in, but it's a very similar result where you go in there and somebody might be afraid of water. And they're like, why am I afraid of water? They weren't born afraid of water, but hey, you, you go back and regress them. And remember that time you were at the swim club and mom was drinking her martini and paying too much attention to the lifeguard and you fell in the water and you got really afraid and she didn't hear you. Yeah. You know, it could, it could go back to that. So you got to assuage, you got to re rewire that and, and neutralize it. So it's, it's, these are proven scientific techniques that, that work. So we can rewire, there's nothing controversial about that. People can do some rewiring of their, of their brain and a lot of things happen because of that. So uh, kudos to you for figuring out how to do it. Is anybody else doing something like that where you use the ball and the colors and the shapes or mm. how did you decide like, this is the best way to do that? Because there is hypnosis. This is a way of doing hypnosis, if you will, getting those benefits, but you're doing it in a completely different way. It's totally different. Yeah, I'm, I'm also uh, a hypnotist as well. And uh, this is uh, engaging the physical body in the process. Mm -hmm. and, and if you remember, you felt it move in the body when you, when, you know, it would be in your heart and then it would go to your throat or go down to your belly, but it moved literally in the body when, when it happened. But um, how your question specifically was, uh, how did I uh, figure out, you know, this? And, and I had been working uh, for about a decade. Uh, I would donate every Saturday. I'd sit in a room and people would come in one after the next. And I would help uh, them. I just, whatever issue they came through with. I studied many, many different things, right? From everything from the East, I could get my hands on and neurology and, and ancient scriptures and all kinds of things. And uh, so I could help with whatever issue they came in with. I, what I told them is I want to make that thing, your biggest problem in your life go away. And that's what I would do. So I figured out what worked and what did not work. And one day I was, I just had this idea and the uh, the idea was to put these particular symbols on these ball on a ball and then, uh, you know, uh, pass it uh, across the center line of the body uh, in different positions and and have the person focus on on the issue. The very first one that happened was I, you know, I didn't know if this would work. Well, one of my friends uh, who lived in San Diego as well. Uh, he wanted to ride to the airport. I've known him since I was 18 years old. And I say, hey, you know what? I know you're suffering with something, you know, but um, we don't have to talk about it, but I just want to try this and see if the, anything happens. So, you know, I made up this, this ball and I, and I went to him and I had him focus on the issue. And, and, and I was, started throwing the ball and having him say the colors. And it was about maybe four minutes. And he started sweating profusely, like crazy sweating. And he said, my belly button is hot. And I was like, that's weird, you know, and, and, uh, but he was sweating his whole body. And then a few minutes later, uh, he, uh, he said, he said, I'm going to have a heart attack, you know? And I was like, I don't think you're having a heart attack. Keep going. You know, it's like my heart and I just keep, stay focused and say the color. And, and, uh, and he did. Another couple of minutes later, he started choking. He was like, I can't breathe. <laughs> I said, how's your heart? It's fine. Uh, he was choking. I said, stay, stay with it, focus. And, and, you know, a few minutes later, it went to his head. It started hurting and then poof, it went out the top of his head. And, that, and, uh, and I was like, wow, that's weird. And, and when I uh, talked to him afterwards, he says, I can't even describe it. It's like, I can't feel it anymore. It's, uh, I remember it, but I don't feel anything about it. Hit the fast forward button, you know, six months later or so, I'm talking to his wife and, and him, and, and she says, hey, you know what? Um, 
we just bought a place in Utah, you know? And I was like, wow, that's weird. You know, that you, you bought a place in Utah. Yeah, it's gonna cash flow day one, you know, two pieces of property up there. And, and also we've taken uh, another part of the property here and, and made an apartment on it. And, and so we're gonna get another, whatever, $1,500 a month from that. So they're cash flow on multiple pieces of property and, you know, all kinds of new things are happening financially. And she, and she says, yeah, why don't you tell them about what that was after you did the work? Yeah. And, and, uh, and I said, hey, hey, what was, by the way, what did we work on? Well, he said, he said, well, I was, you know, he was in aerospace. And he said, he said, you know, retirement's coming up. And all I can think is that I'm going to end up, the only financial plan I can come up with is to buy a trailer and move to the desert and live in the trailer. And this, you know, it's like, wah, wah, wah. Sure. you know, screen door and the you know, tumbleweeds and, you know, and <laughs> maybe a bottle of gin. But, uh, you know, I, and he said, after the session, I, all, I lost all my fear of that. And all of a sudden, he could think of the other opportunities. And all the financial things changed. Everything yeah, changed right. for him because he, could, he was no longer stuck amazing stuff and i went through the process with bill and all i can say is that it worked for me and i'm a work in progress and one of the things i learned is also you can't work with somebody like bill or whoever you work with and then expect that to do all the work ultimately you have to do the work i'll give you a very quick example and i want to turn it over to bill like i was hypnotized to become a non-smoker and i thought that was it well i fell back into that habit and then i went back to the hypnotist and i did it again I went through a process and then I realized I have to be in charge. This is going to give me a head start. So anytime you work with a teacher, you have to ultimately carry the ball because it's us, it's our lives. And spirit's not going to do it for you. Spirit is uh, neutral. We have to create our lives. And what teachers like Bill give us is ways to um, put ourselves in a position to create our own lives. So thank you, Bill McKenna, my special guest on Guys Guys Radio. The name of the book is Only Lesson. The only lesson, Cogno movement. We're going to get. We're going to do this again, Bill, uh, as we had talked about. And I want to get into the more specifics of some exercises people can do. But in the interim, can you tell everybody where they can learn more about you and your uh, work? Oh, sure. Uh, uh, the best possible place is Cogno movement. That Cogno, like your brain, C O G N O, Cogno movement, M O V E M E N T. Over there, I have two free ebooks for you cognomovement.com you can uh you can if you put your uh email address in those uh one book is called uh suffering is optional i know that sounds crazy but it's true you read the book and the other one is the tiny book of big manifesting and you got techniques there that uh, you've never heard before i guarantee it uh for manifesting so um, those are two great ways to start for free. Uh, cognomovement.com. You can get both of those free eBooks. Fantastic. My very special guest on Guys Guys Radio. Please come back, Bill. I want to do it again and get into in-depth uh, exercises with our audience. Um, thank you so much for the work you do. All right. Thank you. If you enjoy the guests and content we bring you each and every week here on Guys Guys Radio and TV, then please support us by subscribing to our channels. Thank you.